This is my media evaluation by Taylor Johnston. I analysed real media artefacts of music videos in the pop genre to highlight the codes of conventions I needed to produce mine. I followed the codes and conventions as it was more secure and didn't want to challenge against real media when it is so popular. I chose a narrative based music video which tells a story and used a variety of camera angles and shots that are shown in the moment. As it was a pop genre, costume was very important, so I made it girly and pink. As the artist had blonde hair, this was also very typical in pop videos. There were no expensive settings used in my music video, which shows how artists have to start at the bottom with not much financial support. The music video starts with a high angle shot which tracks the artist as she walks up the stairs. She wears a bold red all in one which makes it more humorous. There is then a close up where her body language matches the lyrics of the song as she says she doesn't know why and shrugs her shoulders. There is then an over the shoulder shot and a slow zoom onto a love interest. Fast cuts then show the artist trying to choose an outfit to wear till she finally decides on the pink dress. A pan left to follow the artist where it cuts to show her drop into the chair in a mid shot. It then cuts to the artist running on the treadmill as she wants to look good for her love interest. The lyrics link with the action on screen as she then falls off which again adds humour to the video. We then see the male walking as the artist follows him and cuts back to her with the photo as she wishes she was with him. I added a dreamy effect which adds to the emotion behind it. She is then framed in the centre as she walks away from her two friends which shows how they don't agree with her wanting to be with the boy. The setting is very romantic and she is wearing all blue which could portray how she is being cold to her friends or how her love interest is being cold to her. We then cut to the artist getting ready as an over the shoulder shot shows her applying makeup and wearing the pink dress as she feels this will attract the boy's attention. Holding the bunny toy makes the artist seem fragile which is also emphasised by the high angle shot. It is ironic how she sings of a hot sun whilst being in the bath to add humour. I also added a romantic effect on this clip to show she is daydreaming. The camera tilts up on the artist, which is usually done for the male gaze, however as she is in slippers and a dressing gown it again adds humour and irony. The artist looks directly into the camera which adds a link to her and the audience. As the chorus begins I use a different location and an over the shoulder shot as the artist gets out the chocolates to then start feeding her love interest. This is shown more clearly as the camera angle cuts to see her choosing the chocolates to feed him. This is ended with them laughing which makes their relationship seem more fun. A close up of the artist is then used to show her singing as I wanted to emphasise the lyrics in the song. It gets intimate with the artist's emotions before being cheered up by the thought of the show being her finally with her love interest at the end. The bike scene shows the artist continuing her fitness regime. It is broken by a cut to the boy as it shows what her effort is for, till we see them begin to enter the house together. It dissolves into the final clip which shows the artist in the comfort of her own bed again with the bunny, to again show she is very fragile still. The ending is ambiguous as we do not know whether her love interest is there or not. She wears a red vest which symbolises love that she feels towards the boy. I use Synergy throughout my main product and ancillary text as the pink dress is seen in the music video, album digipack and poster. I did market research to ask my target market if they saw Synergy through my music video and ancillary text where all of them agreed. By having Synergy it builds a house style and gives the artist a theme which will help her be more recognisable to the target market. Audience feedback is very important in society as if people don't like it then it won't sell. I began my research with a general questionnaire which gave me basic information about people's tastes and trends. I then did a more specific questionnaire for my focus group where they watched the music video for length of the show which was convenient as I then chose that to use for my music video. By doing these it gave me feedback on the genre that was most popular and what they like and dislike in music videos. This helped me a lot to then create my own music video. I then got market research throughout my construction stage where I asked my target market on their views such as on the final ancillary tasks. I took a variety of original images where I picked the best and most appropriate ones to appear in my album digipack and poster. I edited the images such as this one. To enhance it, I used Photoshop and turned up the saturation and brightness to give it more of a pop genre feel and make it appeal to the target market. I also made her eyes more vibrant to make her stand out. 
I used Serif Photo Plus to cut out the images, making it have no background so it would be more suitable once I added them to my album digipack and poster, as I felt it looked more professional. This was one idea for my poster, but my market research explained how the target market felt the artist looked squashed, so I couldn't use it as my final poster. I again did market research to find my target market's view on the inside of the album digipack and whether they preferred the black crowns or in a range of colours, where they ultimately decided that the black crowns were better as they stood out more. I followed the codes and conventions of a poster and album digipack by previously researching real media artefacts to get a feel of how pop media is presented. Typically seen on a poster was the artist's name, image, album title and release date, so I made sure these were all involved in my poster to follow the codes and conventions. In the album digipack, I researched into the dimensions of an album and included the typical features found such as a barcode and the record company name and website to promote them. The outside of a typical album had an image on the front, artist name and album name, so I felt I followed this well. On the back, I listed the album tracks and timings, which again was done in real media artefacts. The internal part of the album would usually include images, lyrics or artist information, so I had lyrics to the title song and an image of the artist. To film my music video, I used a tripod and the Canon MV920 video camera. It was very bad quality, but I had to make the best with the materials I was given. To take the images for my ancillary tasks, I used a typical digital camera. I edited my original images on Photoshop and Serif Photo Plus. It was very hard at the start as I'd never used these programs before. To create my ancillary tasks, I used the program Serif Page Plus, which has all the suitable features needed, and as I was familiar with the software, it was very straightforward to use. I uploaded all my research, planning and construction on the blogger website. This allowed me to get feedback from others. I used iMovie on my MacBook Pro as this allowed me to also work from home. It was fairly straightforward to use once I got the hang of it. But I also encountered some problems when constructing my music video, such as when I imported my footage into iMovie it chopped off the top of the artist's head, so I had to change the Ken Burns to make it fit. If I could redo this project, I'd make sure that I stuck to the deadlines and spent more time on the filming and editing of my music video to make it more professional.